All right. Hey, look, we're recording for the general meeting now. Yes, our power is mighty, and we've returned from a most lengthy hiatus. Um, lots of stuff to go over. And by lots of stuff, I mean a freaking lot of stuff. Um, the terms of my end of things, uh, of what I've been working on for this break. Um, my June's been overwhelmingly busy. I've had little time to work on things, but it does not help that I've gone sick. Um, and I'm now just only barely recovering from said sickness. But I've been making some good progress on the equipment guide. Um, anyone who wants to help, a lot of what I'm doing at this point has been converting items in the uh, proper equipment guide section, because I split the book into equipment guide and crafting guide. Uh, so Converting things from the equipment guide into the new crafting rules. Uh, getting the new economy set up and all that. Um, changing everything to be based on 10 hour days. Um, so, if you have interest in helping, that's a huge time sink. So anything anyone wants to help with that, help would be appreciated. Um, I'm also still finalizing some more enchantments and the like, so... Uh, I've been going through the ones that Lasora has been posting and to their suggestion box post. And Could adding you say those. that again, Nerb? What was the big work? Uh, trans or converting all items in the equipment guide to their new stat lines. Aha, gotcha. So that's what's been taking the longest time right now has been converting those items. It's I'm almost done with martial melee weapons. But I'm only on weapons and I still need to do armor and shields. Um Yeah. That's that's a big thing. Um It should be noted that if you are going to be converting weapons, armor, or the like, um focus on weapons right now to begin with uh, but you are free to adjust the stats to better provide the flavor of the weapon so for example if you're looking at a a war hammer uh, war hammer d8 d8 uh, d10 if you versatile it I believe if I remember correctly it could be blowing smoke up my ass right now anyways um Fair. I keep forgetting I can do threads. Anyways, um, if you want to give it a new stat line, uh, new properties or the like, feel free. Just try to focus on the flavor of the weapon over everything else. Because there's certain weapons that, like, I gave a critical rating adjustment to. Because we now have critical threat and critical multiplier added in the new weapon crafting systems. Um, so those are back from old editions. Um, and then there's the penetration score, which is DR bypass, uh, which is, tends to be towards more like bludgeoning weapons, hammers, things like that, picks. Um, so feel free to, to work on those. And if you want to make weapons that are rating above one, so the basic, it's a basic sword, um, Feel free. I have a couple of those already made. Um, you know, that, that's the big thing. Uh, adjusting all the prices for items uh, as well to fit the new time slots and whatnot. Specifically the mundane items. Those are another big thing that needs to be adjusted. More specifically the alchemical. But that's the thing that you know, we're already aware of and needs to be fixed because there's obviously things that are not correct. Like clear ear, which is like hundred something gold instead of like the twenty it should be. Um, outside of the equipment guide, let's see here. There's other stuff. Mm 
Um, obviously, the, the Oracle class has been posted. Uh, a lot of people have been reviewing it and putting their um, their particular feedbacks towards it. Um, I've yet to go through all the feedbacks and adjust the class for said things, but it, it will be adjusted. Um, part of this also goes into the idea that expansions is a a new feature for every every character. Uh, I know there's some discussions on that as well, so I need to before that one is fully released, uh, I need to go through balance team and discuss those further. So I know there's a bit more discussion to be had that still. Um but we'll likely have that one officially released probably Wednesday when we finalize these decisions. Um, but just giving an update that uh, I should have time to finally go through and finish these things this week now that I have caught up with work, no longer sick, and just all around have time again to do things. Because, you know, June's over, which is nice. Oh, basically over. Um, other than that, uh, there's some small minor things, but they're more of like um, work on like random downtime activities. I'm just like slightly tweaking per people's suggestions and balance team. Um, so, for example, one of the things that's on our docket right now is fixing the Pit fighting rules. Um, that's been on our docket for a very long time. Um, I started the work. I started writing the work. Uh, I had to then leave midway through editing it. So um, I'll finish that up. It's just I just need to slap it on there. So, but a lot of the talks in Balance Team regarding that. Went into okay, adjustment. my lore post is written. I'll do modifiers later. I can start on the meeting stuff now. Hang on. Yeah, no worries. I'm just going through the things that I've been working on, so until peeps are ready. Um, what else have I been working on? Awesome sauce. Just go to World End real quick so I can remember what I was working on last. I've been doing a lot of weird little things. That? No, it wasn't that. Okay, we're going to do a lightning round of things that need you, Nerp. Ray. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, since my mind's blanking on the things I've also been working on, yes. Yeah, it doesn't help that I woke up like, well, 20 minutes before the meeting started. So, anyways, I'm good to go. Let's let's do the proper topics now. First off. How are secret languages learned? This yeah. was asked by Ladder. We don't have rules for secret languages apparently on the languages page on WA. Uh, it really depends on the language itself. Um, but generally, one would need to discover the language to learn it. Um, to discover a language, easiest route would be research. Um, which would then allow someone to potentially uh, find a trainer. Because since they are secret, you just don't know about them. So you need to know about them in character to even find a trainer, which would require crousing. So I think the easiest route would be research to find out about it, uh, crouse to find a trainer, and then training to learn said language. Or I guess uh, research, carouse, and then take like a feed or something that gives you knowledge of it. Yeah. Um, well, the, the last ball point should be training because you don't Perfect. spend research lore to learn it. Crafting. Um, well, before that, though, there are secret languages that require feats to learn. Uh, specifically, Sakra and Zygaltol. You cannot learn those, period, unless you have a feat or a class. 
um, the class that unlocks these languages is currently actually unlocked. I just need to make it, but since it's on hold until every other class is brought up to Series of Infinity standards or Unchained standards, um, I'm not going to be working on it anytime soon, which is unfortunate because I know my uh, Whispering Nights campaign are really looking forward to it. Um, Though I guess I could just make it and then release it to them, and yeah, I could just do that. I'll probably just do that. Anyways, um, yes, the playtest peoples. Anyways, um, the that language itself is locked behind a feat or a class. The feat and the class are going to be locked until everything else is brought up to speed so that one's people pretty much just can't learn that language consider it non-existent until these things are properly given onto world anvil yeah well the way that you would research a language you don't know exists would be to um research lore l looking into dead languages or research lore looking into obscure languages um, um that's the way to flavorly look into it I was going to use a recent example because it's actually happened recently is like with the vampire language that I've, uh, I've done up, obviously they found texts with it in it, but obviously none of them can read it. So they did research into, you know, understanding it and all that. Yeah. Yeah. They have a source of it, but they obviously can only interpret it through comprehend languages or something like that's not enough to learn. it. Mm -hmm. It's true. Yep. Which is why if you search researching lore, looking into dead languages um a good number of secret languages tend to be dead that aren't actually dead as an example or in Sitham's case they physically have the language in hand they just don't know how to speak it and it's you know secret language so they would need to look into it research it to figure out more it's also causing people to go blind randomly smile yeah don't worry about it. So here's the issue of blueprint crafting. I've looked into this myself, but basically we have two sets of rules. One in the World Anvil and one in the Equipment Guide. Ignore the Equipment Guide, use the World Anvil. version basically is just an explanation of what a blueprint is, but doesn't go much into the costs and mechanics. The World Anvil does provide mechanics, but doesn't explain which downtime action actually makes blueprints and has a set of rule which is different from typical crafting which only needs stationary ink and DC based on the item. Yeah, so for blueprint crafting, the one in the currently viable equipment guide is the old rules. Everything that's on World Anvil is the new rules from the currently in progress equipment guide, which we're slowly transitioning everything from the new crafting guide and equipment guide to World Anvil so people can just go there to look at their stuff or use the PDF when it's released again um so we're on, we're on, on world anvil is accurate as per everything that is based on crafting items blueprints or items it is a crafting downtime action since you are physically crafting a blueprint um i believe I've, i posted this somewhere in um in one of the uh suggestion box uh, question forms, but it is a stationary, I believe, or a number of stationaries based upon the the uh, complexity of the blueprint itself, um, plus ink, and then there were, uh, I believe, basically one day per complexity level. Of the uh, blueprint as well. I can look it up. I'll slap it on World Anvil because I'm. I don't think I remember to put that on there. But it, yeah, it's, it's like a day. It's super cheap to make. We do have a distinction between research and crafting. Yeah, it's it, it's on World Anvil.
complexity costs and all that are based from the base item. Yes, technically. But what, what do you mean? A research blueprint and a draft blueprint are two different types of blueprints that provide a similar function. They're both done through the crafting rules because both utilize the crafting system. The research blueprints, however, since they are done through the crafting rules but are a different method of crafting, they specify how the crafting method functions in their description. Which is why it says there, to do so take the crafty to see how the item blah 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 blah, and then it says you roll craft checks and you reduce the summer by that until you hit zero, the item's still being researched. So it's still a crafting uh, downtime. It just, it describes how to do it in the description of the item itself. Oh wait, I know my confusion. To be clear, does making a new innovative item generally need research first, and then crafting? And does the crafting part strictly require a blueprint or can it be done without but it's practically impossible because of DC slash downtime cost? I missed the second half of that, so if you could repeat. It is always done through the crafting downtime action. Do they need to first researching lore to then make a research blueprint? No. If someone wants to say, hey, I want to make a research blueprint of a tactical nuke, an ICBIM or ICBM or whatever, however you say that word, um, uh, they just do a research blueprint. They, they don't need to know modern technology, atomic era technology, to request to make this item. They're not going to be able to finish it because the DC is going to be like in the millions. Which means that the time it would take to complete that blueprint would be their characters dead. They're just, they're just characters outright dead. And that's purposeful. It's to okay, ensure perfect. that the... You, Nerp. Basically, I think I got mixed up with the old research, which was for literally everything. But basically, yeah. the research and other lore downtimes are for info, but actually researching stuff is just done through crafting, and it's just a soft wall that's restricted by lack of character knowledge. Yeah. Yeah. So, researching blueprints is to unlock new technologies. It is a crafting action. Um, and the time it takes to research it is purposefully long or lengthy to indicate the time it would take to uncover new technology. Uh, I know part of this also coincides with how do people um, increase a region's technology level. Um, whether that be the uh, class TL, the or profession is what we call it, uh, professional TL, the travel TL, you know, one, one of the subcategories. Um, for that, a certain number of that particular category's um, technology would need to be unlocked. So, for example, just giving a region access to black powder firearms is not going to bring them to nine. Right? Also, I didn't uh, hear if you clarified on the complexity costs. I did, yeah. Complexity costs are from the base item. 
or base deep sea, really, but yeah. Researching lore gather info is not pre prereq. That is accurate. Between new items and generators done through the research blueprints, which is done through the crafting action. Uh, the DC tends to be decently high, yeah, because it's based on the given items DC, which is not reduced for blueprint benefits, um, which is then multiplied based upon the time or the tech level, and, and so it goes into the de details, but it does take a very, very, very long time. So that is accurate, but perhaps um, it is a very simplified version of how accurate that is, yes. Blueprints do have a complexity cost. Yes, they do, which is based on the base times DC. Yes. Yeah, they, the cost of blueprints, research blueprints, are pretty cheap, so it's it's fine. If people made it well, cheap, it's, it's you know like a gold or so, maybe more. Thumbs up, yeah, I just needed that clarification since I got confused by the researching part and thought it needed the research activity first, but this helps clarify. Mm Uh, Ixius's post on number two is technically correct. Um, because the post on World Anvil, if they were, if you're referring to crafting basics, I don't know what you're referring to, but crafting basics is what I assume you're referring to. Um, that just lists the different. Uh, like, coin values and how cr complexity is calculated. And then it, it goes into what would constitute a complexity level so you know what the item would be. Um, since blueprints are considered gear, they're not, a cal they're not an alchemical item, they're not alcohol, they're not armor, they're not pets, they're not protective items, they're not weapons. They'd fall under gear, so you'd be able to determine their complexity from this, which subsequently will be able to tell you the complexity cost. So, technically, yes. So. If that's what you mean. But this is the article I'm referring to, is Crafting Basics. So, like, if, if a blueprint, for example, is a DC 26 to craft, um, it would be an advanced complexity. And would have a complexity cost of 26 GP. Yes, it is. But to determine the base item's complexity, if you do not already know it, which blueprints you don't, you would look at this, and this would tell you. Yes. And when making new items, this page itself is going to be your best friend. It'll be able to tell you what the item's DC would then influence what the complexity is, and so on and so forth. Oh, there's the cost. Look at that. I already had the cost.
No. If the Blueprint DC for a draft blueprint, which is different than a research blueprint, is 26, then the item's DC would be 36, yes. That is an accurate statement. Um, complexity is the complexity coin value. So if, if it is an advanced item, for example, which is a coin value of 1 GP, you would times that by the DC. So if it's a 36, it would be 36 GP for complexity. Now you're using the word quality here, which is is very incorrect wording in terms of crafting, because that means something completely different than than what it should be. If you are making a blueprint, the complexity cost of the blueprint is equal to its craft DC for the blueprint times its complexity to value. In the case of a DC 26 blueprint, you're looking at 26 GP. It is, I'm just going to type it. Uh, number two is basically the same question as number one. No, it is, because the DC of a blueprint is derived from the item, but still the blueprint's DC. No. A blueprint has a craft DC equal to the base item minus 10. Which means its DC is 26. Which means its cost is 26, yes.
I think this kind of confusion comes from the fact that it's a derived craft DC. Because if you look up like weapon crafting, the calculations on how you calculate a weapon's DC is like uh, 6 plus the damage bonus to DC plus the critical rating plus the um, penetration score plus the range of the weapon. And all these little values add up to make the DC. So you can like you know, pick and match, pick and choose and make determine the DC that way. Well, for blueprints, it's just look at the base item, minus 10. That's the DC. It has nothing to do with the base item. Like, the base item, the only yes, thing that matters there... Tripping me up. I thought the blueprints themselves had different complexity, but no, they just have different quality. And the complexity is just the base item's complexity. No, the base, the complexity is tied to the DC. Oh, wait, use the table in crafting basics, okay, I see. Yes, use that. I feel like... If there is further confusions, read through crafting basics once, twice, and then ask questions, if you are still confused. Read through the entire page. But, uh, what is next on the docket? Because that took a significant portion of time. Sorry, it's just looking at the page stuff is super buried, but yet to be clear, this came from questions from inconsistent handling of complexity costs because it's not specified if blueprints handle like normal crafting, and that's been cleared up already so we can slap that on the world anvil. TLDR, we're good to go. Moving on. Let's see here. Next one is locked mercantilism. I'll leave that to the econ people to explain. It was mentioned briefly earlier, but there's three issues raised. One being the amounts of GP on a few locked downtimes. One being related to potions specifically, and one related to batch crafting. All right, we have any econ peeps in right now? Not seeing anybody. Not hearing anyone talk up, so. Is ladder here? Hang on. I do not see a ladder. He is not paying to let me grab their basic descriptions, but I don't think I can elaborate on this one much since it gets into econ math. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Um, the basic of it, from what I know, is there's a couple of mercantilism ones that are using alchemical items, and they have very extreme uh, data gold co gold gained. Yeah, from it. So this one, I'm already a little aware of. Um. Specifically, like the clear eye as an example, 
um, yeah. is overly priced and just needs to be fixed, um, which would... We already discussed a little bit in Econ Meeting. Um, I just need to go through and fix the prices, and it should be fine. Yeah, we just have a couple of mercantilisms uh, paused until prices are fixed. Yep. Um, days pause because of it. That is rules for selling excessive amounts of things. Uh, that one I think is is easy to be added. Um, one of the things I want to do. Before we move to concluding that the batch crafting is a basic question. Yeah, for batch crafting, um, there's currently two methods of getting it right now. Uh, plus the structures rule, which will be made clear with the new equipment guide. Though. Uh, People who have seen the equipment gu or structures guide should already generally know what that's going to be doing. Um, it does not negate the cost of the item. You still have to provide every resource for the batch. It just means you can make the batch in the same time. So it negates the additional time sink of the item. So, if, for example, you are making a potion of uh, greater healing, the reagents needed to make each potion is still required. If that was the question. I I'm not sure what the question is specifically with batch crafting, but there's a couple of ways to do it. Oh, there is a question right there. Look at that. I'm blind. I was probably meant to work. Pricing meant to work. I think what Ladder is asking is if removing the time sink is okay because potions give such high profits. That's fair. Um, I think one of the things that can be done for this would be um, in my update for the economy on potion side, because I've not yet touched potion economy yet in the uh, uh, crafting guide. Um, I can just better fit in the values so it, it's not as bloated. Maybe a better solution than removing batch would just be removing the profit margin, maybe? Nah, it's not, that's not possible. Like, the only way to do that would be to say that the base item's cost is now cheaper. Because, for some reason, that you're selling it in multiples, it's now cheaper. Which we're already planning on doing by adding in the rule that Ladder Smith posted there, where selling excessive amounts of things is not as, uh, beneficial. Um, Shoot, you're right. Yeah. Excessive selling rules, then. Yeah. But, adjusting the prices of these items will definitely help. Um, I think the big thing would be in terms of potions, adjusting their complexity and their training costs tied to them. Because that will be a big help, I feel, in making them not so... Uh, wealthy, I guess. I'm looking into it. That, that's that's that, that's the answer right there. I feel it's being looked into. Uh, we already had an economy meeting uh, not too long ago, so um, it's on my docket. But currently, though, uh, pricing. I previously had the pricing set up to where if you, I'm sure everyone was where where. You had like bought one potion, you get like 37 gold. By every additional potion thereafter, you only added like six instead of 37. Um, that system had its own issues, so it's just intended to be you gain the, the gold price because the time cost of a potion is actually fairly minimal. Like, most of the time, the time cost that goes into a potion, or uh, an item in general, is, like, 
a couple copper to a couple gold. Uh, the higher tier potions, though, it can get pretty costly. But for those ones, they have to provide really powerful reagents for, which are pretty rare, so it's less likely to be an issue. But yeah, no, excessive selling rules will add in, and we can make those values tighter for potions and similar items that are of concern. So it's... should be fine. Okay, I have a few set questions for resolving the urgent portion. Uh, should we reject and refund sales that are determined to be excessive based on us intending to nerf it? Needs to go through, but have a stance going forward warned that they may be denied or managed to seen fit. Um, well, they should already have negative modder when using mercantilism. Unless you're selling them to adventurers, they should be harder to sell, which I believe is already the case in terms of mercantilism rules. Um, until we add in the merchant guild faction or factions, I'm a little hesitant in adding anything like that. Because I don't want a, a thing that would hinder players from being able to do something unless they're actually able to participate in the thing that hinders them. So if someone wants to make a merchant faction, slap that button world anvil, well, I'm perfectly happy to add that in as soon as that's done. I would be worried about making a merchant faction right now just with how people are pushing out abilities to make what well, I think one person was able to find 500 GP a downtime day. Hmm. It's good money. All right, let's see. Okay, before we get too off topic, so do we want to restrict excessive GP income right now, NERP? I would say so, yes. If it's an excessive amount of GP gain from an action. Um, put it on hold. If it's already on hold, then add it to Firehouse. And it shall be gone over. And if it's not gone over by the meeting, so like if, if we are told about it today and it's not gone over by next week, um ping me again, and I will just slap it right then and there. But, you know, give me at least like, okay. a week to go through things. Do you have a personal threshold, or do you want to hand this off to Econ and Downtime to make judgment calls? Econ and Downtime can a also handle these. Cancellation? Well, Econ can do handle you these want things. To personally handle? In terms of retcons, or the like, um... It really depends on the, the situation, so if it's an economy retcon, then it would be economy in myself. If it's a balance retcon, be balance in myself. Um, I'm good if people in the team want to handle these. It's just, since these are ones that are specifically waiting for my attention, I figured just put it in the firehouse. I would say an excess amount of GP gain um, per downtime day. Let's just see here. Bring up a book real quick, just make sure my numbers are right. Thumbs up, I think mostly the attention part was raising the topic of the base issue with potions, but I'll check with econ and downtime folks and let them know they can make judgment calls. Any guidelines you give, feel free to note them down too. Let's see here. Hmm. 
All right, if someone's making multiple thousands of gold per day, that outright there is an issue. Um, with obvious exceptions. If they are selling like a magical item and they're, if, you know, like 12,000 gold item and they're selling it with two days for some reason, I, I don't know why two days would be something that's that potent. But as an example... Then yeah, they're selling like an artifact grade armor. It's they should be, you know, able to sell that with no issue. Um if they are just selling like six hundred potions, then that goes into the rule that we're working on, which is the excessive amounts thing. Um if it is something like the clear eye, where it's obviously overpriced, because that thing's supposed to be like 20 gold. Um, so I think for that one, they're making like 3,000 gold or something like that, which, considering the number that they're selling, I wouldn't consider that too excessive. But it also goes into the excessive rule, and that one goes into the rule of uh, the item itself is mispriced. Scream this real quick. Yeah, so that's essentially two hundred eight GP a day. That's not that's not that bad. I'd say if a good rule of thumb is if the Ida if their GP per day equates to about seven hundred fifty GP, we can look at it. Maybe five hundred if if it's like on the cusp. So like five to seven fifty, we'll look at it and determine from a case by case basis if it needs to be adjusted. Yeah. It's like five K for twenty four days, that's like two hundred GP. It's not too bad. Okay, I'll ask Econ and Downtime to review those, and if they're not at that threshold, we can process them or hold further. Yeah. Um, one of the other things that I've been wanting to bring up, since I know that things are starting to kick off more and the economy's built, um... This is going to be more like a discussion heavy in terms of the economy side of things, and it's definitely not going through anytime soon, if it is. Um, but um, one of the things that we did way back when was dramatically adjust the amount people can get for shopping and mercantilism. Because previously it was like 300% uh, plus 300% costs to buy items from the shopping market. Um, which we reduced to like 125, 150, something like that. Something really low, 180. Um, the main reason we did that was to allow the players to build the economy so they can actually, you know, trade with each other again and start, you know, getting used to these systems. So that is something that needs to be discussed on if we need to bring that back back up but that is for future economy meetings because we have yet to discuss that as an economy yet but i wanted to you know put that out there that it's going to be discussed so people who watch this video in terms of the community and the like are aware it's being discussed again i don't say dramatically increased but you know it's, it's, yeah. right we wanted a player driven primarily one right It is true.
you know, um, with the current values for shopping, mercantilism, 500 GP a day, for those who are specialized merchants, I can easily see that being a thing. Uh, is it good? No. 500 GP a day is the, we need to look at this to see if it should be a thing. Um, but I can see it happening. Now, if it's something like I make 500 GP a day consistently, that is an issue. But if it's like, oh, I happened upon this mine within my region that, or within my game, and I happened to get all these really powerful reagents that I was able to harvest, and then I made some items with those, so in the end, I spent like 20 days and I ended up making about 700 GP a day. Because of this, this one period, that's just luck. Luck of the draw. That's fine. But if it's, I have access to this mine, I can actively make these items, I can shit out these really powerful, or not really powerful, but really costly items and just sell them to the market and abuse the system, that is an issue. So like a one and done, that's fine. A constant, that's an issue. A consistent uh, wealth gain per day, I would say, should be about 150, 200. And that is if they are focused on wealth gain. If they're just doing like a, a PAP, as an example, that one's not supposed to be your... I am a crafter, I'm a merchant, I am focusing on getting this coin, making that bread. That is, I want to make some... Money. I want to remove my upkeep costs because those can get pretty costly for people uh, with what's planned for the structures and whatnot. Um, it's also to help generate influence and the like. So it's it's not intended to be the money maker of money makers. It's intended to be the money maker of those who do not have the skills to otherwise take in the money makers, as well as getting some other. Fancy benefits. And that's fine if it's less. We brought it up in balance too that um, PAP adventuring and volunteering need to be balanced out because currently all of them are misproportionately giving benefits for what we believe should be properly aligned. Because right now there's no reason to do one over the other in any situation. You're always going to get the best out of all three, no matter what, if you do adventuring. Being an adventurer shouldn't theoretically matter in this case. Um, it should still be, and what we talked about was separating the actual values. So we want PAP to be the most gold um, out of the three, volunteering to be the most influence out of the three, and then adventuring to be the most experience out of the three. I can definitely agree with that. Um... Um, but basic, But how PAP is now, when the high end is one gold a day, and we're looking at, you know, we want it to be around 150. That's a little bit low. Like, even, yeah. even being at, like, 5 or 6, I think it's, it's still, it's better. Yeah, I can it see Pap being yeah. buffed. Um, adventure needs to be nerfed. Pap needs to be buffed. Uh, uh, volunteer needs to be a bit of a rework. Um, you know, I, I can agree with that. Um, when's economy good to have a meeting, by the way? We're definitely going to need another meeting soon. Okay, that's out of scope, but yet yeah, econ meeting stuff. Fair enough. I'll, I'll post an econ channel. In Let me future. drop a note about that in econ. All right. Well, next thing, since getting close-ish to time, um... Armored clothing and AC clarifications was gone over and balanced already recently. Just need to verify the results and no one's going live on World Anvil patch. Remind me about this particular situation. Six years. This is the topic at hand.
I'm guessing this is referring to um, when it was brought up, me and Zyron going through and understanding that the armor bonuses should technically classify as competency bonuses, so a lot of the benefits shouldn't be stacking like they should, as people believe it. Yeah, so um, armor is competence bonus, shields are a competence bonus, armor clothing is competence bonus, um, armor clothing is a competence bonus to armor, or from armor, so it does not stack with armor. You cannot wear armor clothing and armor at the same time, and you can, but it's just not going to benefit you. Um, the new armor crafting system will make this fairly evident, because armor or clothing has a armor crafting system now. So, like, how you can normally make light, medium, or heavy, you can also now make clothing light, medium, or heavy. So that should make things clearer. Um... Which will also make things clearer as well, because I know people are confused about the fact that armored clothing is an armor property, but is applied to clothing. So, like, how is that? It, it's been causing confusions. It's on the equipment guide, or uh, crafting guide. It's being updated. It should make things so much easier. Yeah, the real, the real issue, and I think the real heart of it, was that um, when you have the quality benefits, they are very nicely already listed out with what bonuses they apply, whereas mm -hmm. the um, property benefits do not. Yeah. Saying like, oh, you get a plus two AC from like Rampart, or you get like plus two AC from Enhanced Ballistics, or you get plus one AC from this property. Like theoretically, they they don't have that bonus name attached to it, which is why when we went over it, we're like, well, only the highest should apply because it's a competency bonus. Yeah. But that's not unlike in the property, or unlike in the quality, it's not like actually stated. So I think that's just referring to that, that there was just general confusion that, yes, these are bonuses that do apply, and no, they do not stack with each other because of this rule that we already have that exists. Yes. That is true. Zyron gave those two conclusion in Econ. I'm basically just verifying that those two are accurate and can be patched in. Yeah, yeah, those can be patched in. Perfect, nice, and easy speedrun approval. Yeah. Um, in terms of your question there, Ixius, uh, does Rampart enhance ballistic stack? Those features have been adjusted. Um, so I wouldn't worry about it. But no. The bonus to AC from Rampart and enhanced ballistics would not stack in their current forms because they're both a competence bonus. From the same source. Um, I haven't read the AC conversation um, that you posted in Balance yet, but I'm mm -hmm. along with AC stuff. Is other stuff that affects AC being considered for Balance? Or are those all considered competency? For instance, like certain classes that get plus AC based on a stat instead of this stat. Like what? Like is that? Yeah, yeah, no. Uh, those would be considered. Uh, one of the things I posted in the. AC discussion. Um, things like that nature are actually going to be converted to, uh, depending on the type, uh, natural bonuses or dodge bonuses. Gotcha. Um, so dodge bonuses, if you are like movement speed reduced to zero, lose it. Um, natural bonuses, they're a bit stronger. They don't have real ways to negate it so easily. Um, but they do not stack with other natural bonuses. Is there... I'll have to go into it, but that, that's a conversation I can just message you yeah. about. I don't think we can uh, do it here. We have other yeah. things to go yeah, into. No, the, the AC thing goes pretty in-depth, and I think it has a pretty Let's good range. It's, we do. It's already a thing. It's oh, ballistic yeah. AC, though we're calling it touch AC in the new equipment guide, so... Yeah. Uh, the main reason it's being renamed to touch instead of keeping it as ballistic is because uh, ghosts and incorporeal creatures, creatures that can generally bypass armor... Go against touch AC. And it's easier to call it touch than ballistic because they're not using ballistic weapons to do it. Yeah. So if you're using incorporeal creatures, a common AC to attack would be ballistic. Which is renaming to touch. 
Anyways, uh, there is a character sheet in our players folder in the Google Drive. Uh, probably called uh, SOD or Spheres of Divinity blank 5e sheet or blank sheet, something like that. Uh, that is my test sheet for these new rules, the new equipment guide rules, and new stuff. Um, that's one of the things I, I just remember that I've been working on. Um, don't touch it. It's it's a minefield of being edited right now. Uh, it is not to be given to players, as it is not an official sheet at this point in time, but it might be turned into one. And if you're helping me with uh, with any of these edits, then you are free to touch it. It's just, you know, so people are aware. It's, it's not a used sheet at this time. It is a testing sheet. Okay, so topic five was already mostly covered. Just need that conclusion confirmed by you. Uh, let me just post the, the topic so people can see it. Was just the batch crafting question by ladder. Yes. Um, where's ladder's question? In stuff for Sunday. I'll copy it, hang on. All right. Essentially, if I remember correctly, uh, potion crafting costs are being adjusted. Uh, they're being put into more in line with what they should be. Um, the time costs tied to crafting items is fairly minimal. So the fact that one can craft these while ignoring that cost um, is almost negligible for most cases. That look right? Yeah. It do be. All right. Uh, the pacing the next one thing. Is a question from me, which I think may have just been a confused Pathfinder wording, but basically our DR you confirmed was slash what is resisted, right? Yeah, so DR2 bludgeoning would be you resist two points of bludgeoning damage. Uh, my saying dr two cold iron was me being a banana. Uh, it would actually be written as... Non-cold iron. Non-cold iron physical, yes. This is what it would actually be written as. Um, I shorthand it to just be cold iron. Because I know what I mean. But officially it should be written as that. Perfect, yeah, what's that. resisted works way better because it's not as all-encompassing compared to how Pathfinder has DR out the ass on everything. Yes, uh, bypassing rules in the new equipment guide and with a lot of the changes going on will definitely help with that. Because um, I know even right now, even base 5e, DR can be an issue. Um, but it's being fixed, it's looked at. That should be set uh, for this feat, though. Let me bring it up. It's a guile feat. Silver tongue. All right. And what is the issue with the silver tongue in particular? I imagine I know what it is, but I'm curious. I imagine it's the favor one specifically. Yeah, I think we were looking for clarification on if it was giving an additional contact or just an additional favor with a contact. Uh. Additional favor with said contact. And I would assume that would only apply to one contact if you were Correct. to get multiple during. Okay. Yeah, it is. So if you are spending the. Plus one with a contact of choice? Yes. Can that be just staff choice? 
If staff wants to make it easy, yeah. I would normally lean towards the one that they're preference towards. So if they like say specifically, I'm looking for a contact that can get me into this into this gala. So someone who's like a member of a waiting staff or a servant or something like that, and give that particular individual plus one favor. Um, so like do lean towards player choice, or at least player intention, but make it staff choice for ease. Um, for full context though if someone were to example say spend the minimum number of days to carouse I don't remember what that is but let's just say it's 10 days for, for ease of math um, they spend 10 days they get uh, uh, enough successes to get either two contacts each with one favor or a contact with like pretty good contact stuff um, or I, I actually, uh, they roll high enough to get two contacts. Um, one of those contacts would get plus one favor, the other one just have standard one. So one would be two favors, one of them would be one favor. Um, if they were to do this again, so let's say they spent 20 days doing carousing, each individual section of carousing would gain this benefit. So, let's say they're not spending the additional days to boost their chance of success, but to gain additional favors, or additional contacts. That would apply. So if it's not, they're not spending the days to, to like, guarantee success, but rather to gain new contacts, it's considered a new downtime action, so. Wait, okay, so it's goal-based? Let me just, I'm gonna go bring up the rules for, uh, downtime Krausing just to make sure I'm not talking out my ass right now. That could very well be. It's been a while since you looked at Krausing. Krausing basically can give multiple contacts for a single targeted thing. Yeah. Every week spent crossing, you must pay a fee to do each week of crossing. Player stands to make contacts with the selected social class. All right, that's why. Okay. Uh, there's not a way to boost your chances of success from the looks of it on crossing tables. So yeah, no. If if they spend a week to cross, um, and they get, let's say, they have their maximum roll of twenty one plus, they get three alley contacts. Uh, one of those three would give two favors. The other two would give one. They spend another week crossing. Let's say they roll another twenty one plus, they get another three allies. One of those three would have two favors. The other two would have one, so they'd now have two contacts with two favors and four contacts with one. However, there is a cap. Uh, the cap of alley contacts is equal to one plus your charisma modifier, so they're probably hitting the cap at this point. Those with uh, the minimum number of favors are probably going to be sent to the void, so they would lose those ones. Um, as they can always choose which favors to ignore. Most players, I imagine, who are doing crossing will probably have pretty good charisma. Or at least who are, you know, using this feat. If you have this feat, you're probably going to have good charisma. Um, so I imagine we'll be looking at between uh, four and six allied contacts. So if they did this, let's say, like, 42 days worth, they probably have each of their contact slots filled with a plus one favor. But, you know, they'd be focusing on it, they'd have to roll 21 plus each time, or, or not 21 plus, uh, 13 plus each time. So. Yeah. 
It's not per contact. It is each set of carousing gives one of the contacts a plus one. All right, and uh, in terms of the Silver Tongue's other features, specifically ballpoint um, three and four, uh, four very clearly states it cannot be used in downtime. Uh, three does not have that qualifier. Um, people seem to want it to have that qualifier. Um, I can see the argument for. Um, I don't think stamina being used in DT is a necessarily bad thing. But it needs to be more costly than what it would be. So I can see this one being slapped on, saying that it cannot be used for this downtime. I mean, that one specifically is definitely more beneficial for in-character use anyways. So. Uh, however, with the changes to Spears of Divinity, that downtime action is definitely going to have its stamina cost, or that, not downtime action, that action is going to have its stamina cost increased. Um... So I'm just going to do this right now. Save people the trouble. Copy. Faster. It now reads this down. Cannot be used in downtime. And look, it's been fixed. The options for Silver Tongue to use in downtime has been removed. The specifically the uh, third and fourth bullet point, though. And obviously, it can be used in downtime for other portions of it. Because, you know, it's a downtime feat. But... That one's been removed. Um, I'm also going to increase the cost of it. Two points of stamina. Two points of stamina. Two, two. All right. All right, there we go. The silver tank key has been updated and no longer be used at downtime for three or four. Uh, and 3 and 4 now cost 2 stamina instead of 1 stamina. Alright, that should hopefully fix some things. Uh, next thing on the docket... Nerp question about your distributing carousing days, by the way. So if someone asks for a single goal and they roll multiple contacts, then they just get plus 1 with one of them. But if they have several days but two goals, they can get up to one of each, right? What do you mean? Pretty much, Earlier it's that. you said this feat can give plus one favor for different carousing goals if it's all in one submission, but it's a lot of days, like 21. You know, if, if we see one submission that says someone's spending 21 downtime days for carousing, uh, carousing has no method of spending more days to boost it. So that's just us saying that they're spending uh, three weeks doing three different carousing attempts. It's just them saving time in submissions. 
Yeah, it's basically just every seven can trigger it once. All right, perfect. Yeah. I would not read it, uh, write it as such because we might change the number of days required. I would say um, for each. Thanks. All right, we're good on that end. Yeah. And yet I'll just Everyone toss it, it as a staff note. But basically, however, every activation of carousing or successful activation of carousing would provide plus one favor to one contact. Yeah, each instance. Because uh, we're probably going to be okay, adjusting the the uh, mechanics of crossing soon. And by we, I mean, we're probably going to be adjusting it somewhat. But that's neither here nor there. All right. Patch is already in progress, so that was fine. Table and lifestyle benefits need to be on World Anvil or written up. Check with NERP. The downtime revelry, a revelry downtime activity. Um. Yeah, I didn't put that one on World End, or didn't I? I'll grab that. Accidentally refreshed while writing. Mm -hmm. There was one more clarification thing that I forgot to add to the list. Yeah. Uh, the revelry table, by the way, is mostly just a what happens when you get blackout drunk. Upkeep was meant to be start of June, but that was during break. Do we want to do one of three options? I'll type them in chat. It also, not exact. It doesn't have to be blackout drunk. It's just you know what happens when you get drunk. Uh, and it can range from good to bad. Most of it's just to be like, hey, I I did a thing, like fun little whimsical things. I ran several revelry tables in the past. I just I need to find it. It's buried in my notes. Um, where my players. Had like weird random mischief. Think of it like the Skyrim mission, where in Skyrim, if you get drunk with uh, Sam, you end up getting married to a hag raven, or almost, you, you know, you leave them before you actually tie the knot. But uh, you know, random fun mischief happens. Oh, the benefits. Yes, the benefits. All right. Yeah, no, no worries. Um, again, I'll have to look at my notes for those. It's probably deep in my fucking downtime activity way back when, when I started working on it. If anyone has ideas, feel free to throw them my way. They're probably better than what I have written up, because at the time I was trying to blast things out into existence. Um, but I'll look through my notes to find them. Okay, see those two options. Do we want to skip, do it full price, or do it reduced price? Three options. I do it with time progression. No need to reduce the cost. There, the delay should not have occurred in the first place. In my opinion. Yeah. So them having a, a discount is unnecessary because they would have lost that money regardless. Yeah. They, they have the funds to afford a, an upkeep or to, you know, choose one that's cheap enough or, you know, whatnot. Just have it happen when we drop 
Uh, okay. Set just and do it normally. Yeah, just do I'm it normally. I'm gonna have to talk to Econ about setting that up then. And well, we never covered it during the pre-break meeting. Technically, they've gotten a free month of the last upkeep anyway, so it's literally all the same. And upkeep ain't that expensive. Mm -hmm. uh, for pit fighting rework, um, I'm still adding to it on World Anvil, so it's it's in progress. That's it should be done soon. Uh, for find familiar update, post it to me in Firehouse. I will read it uh, this week. Probably not tonight, because I have to finish my editing gig work for this week so I can hit my cap. Um, but I'll definitely read it probably Monday or Wednesday. And ping nerf with it as number one priority. Um, let's see here. Tool secondary ability scores, those can already be put onto the AOK track, so those have already been listed for players to see. Put them in patch notes, they're good to go live. Version update origins, I believe that one's already been posted and good to go live, so that one's good to go. Uh, vampire class. Um, I have yet to look over it, post it to me in Firehouse, I'll read it when I read um, Find Familiar. Um, yeah, I, I, we did do some playtesting of it recently. Uh, I do need to make some tweaks, mostly because um, Zurich has a lot more HP in it than, uh, mm -hmm. you know, when I originally designed the class to have, like, HP consumption casting, so... Yeah, yeah. If you get it approved by Wednesday, forward it to me, I'll toss on patch. Sounds good. And yes, tools are already approved, it just wasn't patched because Neb requested them to be with next patch. Gotcha, gotcha. Garcia origins are good. I'm just noting to include in patch notes. Easy clap. Yeah, same same general changes to gambling. Just the numbers are tweaked a little bit because it's not as dangerous. But once I finish the updated wording for um, pit fighting on World Anvil, I'm just going to copy paste it and then change the values and Control F, Control or Control H, anything that says, oh, no, Control H, because that would get rid of all the ones. I'm gonna adjust it. It's fine. There are minor tweaks. It'll, it's being adjusted. Anyways, um, anything else needs to be discussed? Things to note down. Okay, I think we're done on the patch notes, and now we're on the actual usual general meeting LMAO. Damn, that was a 135-minute discussion so far. Oh, I'm gonna skip expanded discussion since we basically covered that during, plus they'll be in later meetings. Ah, oh, damn. Hmm. All right, well, what is on the docket in this case? What... Would people like to discuss things to bring up? First off, Discord forum stuff. Anything from there that we need to discuss that you saw? Or have we not gone over those recently? Let's see here. Um... <laughs> There's a good number of the question forum posts that I've not uh, fully read. Some that I have read, some that I have marked as unread so I can look back at it. Um, I don't think anything of them needs to be immediately brought up. Nothing's like immediately notable. Uh, let me go ch look through the suggestion box though, see if those ones were different. Uh, I just need to apply the changes that people have been suggesting from Oracle. And once that's done, it's good to go. Now. If anyone has non-priority stuff to bring up, feel free to ask now. Yeah. All right. In terms of the suggestions, suggestion box uh, forum, uh, the decayed condition, um, I believe that one I approved. 
essentially their want uh the suggestion is to change the decayed condition into a multi-tiered condition kind of similar to how like fear is multi-tiered how a grapple is multi-tiered things like that um so give it some more range rather than just being bam boom you're fucked um yeah and uh part of that goes into the updated spells for lesser restoration and restoration and the like which will have more indications on how to cure it so yeah uh that one's being approved i just need to slap it on world anvil it should be good to go uh there was another one that i just instantly marked as improved i don't remember which one that one was though to look through the tags which one i marked as accepted no, I didn't mark this one as exceptionally. Let me go fix that. There we go. Um, where were you? Choking? No. Clothing? Nope. It's somewhere. I'll, it, it's, it's not popping up, so it's, it's fine. I'll keep scrolling down, but... I don't remember what it was. Anyways, it was one I approved. Um, it was very simple. I, I, I think it was more of... I didn't need to do any work for it. Because when I approve things, I tend to instantly go and work on it. But I didn't do it with that one, so... Whatever it was. If someone remembers, they can message me. Otherwise, uh... Seems like it's already done. It might have just been one of the ones where it was like a uh, can rain a uh, paladin smite with ranged weapons, which the answer was yes, yes they can. At least in Syrac they can. It actually might have been that one, but I didn't mark it as proof, so maybe. It Anyways, regardless, anything anyone would like to bring up? Things to note down? Things to discuss? Hmm, very nice fishing system. Excellent. That's what I was working on. The fucking faction system. Making new factions and stuff. Um, I have yet to look at it. The Tyrus Academy things that you've been working on. Uh, player factions, yes, but it's also ways for players to reach the same levels as our factions that we've made. I'm, I'm trying to make it so it's the same system, so if we're making new factions, we can just use this crafting uh, faction crafting system. So, you know, it makes things easier on us in the future. Um... So I need to look through the Tyrus Academy to see which features you gave them so I can add it to the list of features you can buy in the faction system. But otherwise, it's... Yeah. Um, this is the main reason why I haven't looked at it, by the way, is because I'm trying to get that finished so I can then be like, hey, people can start using this for ease. Yeah. But yeah, no, if... Um, if the... Elderia team is good with the Atiris Academy, uh, and Balance team is good with their their benefits. Then I'm good with it. With the uh, the update. Sounds good. There's one thing from suggestion box up for discussion, which is pretty low priority, pertaining to RP mechanics and eavesdropping. Basically, the question is that while it's standard to ping if you are listening in on a conversation that might modify player behavior even if someone has sufficiently high passive perception or is actively trying to conceal it, and have a ruling or system to do this. Any thoughts on how this can be practical? My initial thoughts are some kind of hidden channel for each region where a player can maybe submit requests for eavesdropping, or maybe ping regional staff to make a private channel to log that yes you are trying to eavesdrop. Is there a way for us to have a channel, and I feel like there is, um, where we'd mark it as staff can see. We can do private threads to log those actions. But players cannot see the message history. I feel like that would work. And private threads could work too. Yeah. 
we could just add a channel per region that's play requests or political requests. Yeah, that could work. Um. I wouldn't worry too much about this one's channel blow, but it, channel blow is definitely a concern, so it's it's good to have. True, we could use existing event channels. We don't need to set it up since they need to ping staff anyway, I think. Yeah. Unless we want to allow players to make private threads but have a rule that this is not allowed except for communicating with staff. Hmm. I think it'd be easier just to keep it with with a uh, pink staff and they can do it. Uh, but we already have the rules for our RP etiquette where they do have to indicate if they're doing certain things like this. So, and I made that clear with the most recent update after people were eavesdropping and not letting people know that they were eavesdropping. So, even though it was already in the, it's It's clear now. It's in the listing. The rules there. So, yeah. Yeah, ping staff, private thread. Sounds good, but yeah, we can add that into the etiquette rule. Oh, it was already added. Yes, basically they just wanted to ask about having an actual rule for how to do that without pinging players to inform them of listening in. Oh, you meant the pinging of style. Yeah, no, we can definitely add that. I see what you mean. It's just one of those things that fell into the problem of like, oh, you know, I've got high passive perception and I can hear these things. And that's fine to mm -hmm. an extent, though. You probably should be rolling still because passive perception is more like if you know something's there. Yeah. Well, passive perception, I can see it working, um, which is one of the reasons why I have passive perception set to a base DC, a base of five instead of ten. Um, passive perception also explicitly states that you can hear stuff through walls if you focus. Yeah, which would be an active check at this point. Yeah, well, that's what I meant. But, um, past perception, if someone has, like, a past perception <clears throat> of... Ah, my voice is completely dead. Um, <clears throat> of, let's say, 17, and someone's on the other side of a wall, and someone who's on the other side of a wall is whispering, they just can't hear what's whispering. Because you got to remember the DC increases for distance and obstructions. Which... I really need to add a world anvil to the perception category. But if there's a wall in between you and like it, let's say it's a Soji screen wall, so, you know, paper thin wall. Yeah, no, the DC is not ne is negligible. If it is a wooden wall, I believe it increases the DC by four. Stones increases it by eight. So you need to have a pretty high pass perception to hear someone in a... A chamber that's got the door closed and they're whispering. That looks good, yeah. Looks most excellent, like I see. Or sorry, um, it, I, I've already had the rules um, in the RP Etiquette channel, which I'm 99% like sure I do. Those are accurate. I was just throwing out numbers because I could, didn't remember what they were off the top of my head. In the future, if we had mod mail or something, they can send it through a command, maybe. I'll ask Quara about that, which will leave no hmm. trace aside from the private thread that staff can see. Well, there you go. You know, um, once the perception skills has been updated to match those in Spheres of Indie book, um, the etiquette document will also be updated to match the new uh, DC system. Yeah, most of the time... Uh, unless players are really focused on passive perception, which they will exist, it's unlikely people will be able to just randomly overhear a whispered conversation in another room. 
Yeah, it also just runs into the issue of like if one side has high pass. Well, sorry, if both sides have high passive perception, you know, someone needs to be able to check on both. Yeah, you know, if if someone has high pass pass perception in the room and someone is on the other side of the room listening in on the conversation, unless they are stealthing to the wall, they're gonna be heard. True, true. You know, the, uh... Astro's Cat in in Narazvin has that in the private chambers. So. Yeah, just uh, post it to me in, in Firehouse, and I can look over the faction. Nerp, how much time you got might need to go over some stuff with you after. Uh, very little time. So I still need to have breakfast before I can do my work. Or proficiencies can be. Rewards, yes. All right. Uh, with that all settled, though, I... Hey, Manny, okay, can we pop in a meeting for 15 minutes just to quickly blaze through some stuff? Uh, before that, uh, anything anyone else would like to discuss? Things to note down? Things to bring up? I see many people typing. I am waiting. Right. Right, 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 right. Tech research for getting a new... What was it again? Oh, I'll post it after the meeting's recording's over, so I don't scroll into Firehouse with that. Um... Oh wait, we have uh, Kismet stuff. Isn't it? You're here. Hello. I don't think anyone brought up Kismet's things and Sunday meeting stuff. Oh no, we did. Okay, never mind. Yeah, no, we 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 are percent whatever that. Okay, never mind. We we did the thing. We know what we did. I didn't. All right, let's see here. Um, in terms of structures, uh, nothing in regards to that was really discussed, no. The current uh, structure guide is usable. So if people do start making things, you guys can use it. Um, the only thing that's really lacking is the... Um, what's the word for it? Hireling. Hireling portion of it, yes. Um, but also the quality benefits of structures. Yeah. Those are mostly done. In fact, I think the majority of them are done. I just there's a few I want to tweak. 
before I uh, release that portion, so. I think they're in the equipment. They might be in the crafting guide. Yeah. Well, that's what the plot is. When you're buying a plot, you're not technically buying a plot, because, I mean, Bruges is a feudal society. They're not just going to sell you land. Um, you're gaining access to it. So, in all intents and purposes, if you buy a plot, so let's say you buy a uh, a grand building, uh, the 350 GP that it's listed as, you now have access to that plot and can build on it. Should we just deny structure usage until we get a follow-up meeting on writing up a guide for actually interacting with them? Buy I mean, a plot, how it affects upkeep. All that jazz. Well, they already have listings for that. The majority of rules for uh, structures are already made and already uh, sent out to the staff. The only thing that's really missing is how hirelings they, function to them, as well as how quality affects them. They were, but um, when Neb was reviewing them, their values were extremely outdated for price-wise and for their benefits. So they they were going to originally re-go through them and try and rebalance them for what we understand where we want our values to be around. But uh, I'm sure that has been dropped by them for now. So gotcha. So that was that was the original issue was that their values, um, including build times, materials, and stuff, was fairly outdated as we have progressed and where we want certain things to be. And as we get a more fleshed out idea of where we want things to be. Okay. Uh, and they just haven't been Maybe adjusted. Maybe it's so... better just to hold off on structures until we take another look at it. We can hold off then um, until equipment guides released and Kami and I can go through a proper meeting with them. Um, yeah. I'll repost the PDF though. So people can get an idea of what it functions like. Um, my Tuesday group, the Whispering Knights, they have used the, the structure rules, though. And they spent a fuck ton of money doing what they wanted to do with them. I mean, if you're going to spend, like, 5,000 GP to get a basic workshop, then, you know, Consider that cheap. It's definitely an investment because it's going to make things cheaper for you in the future, but. Anyways. Um, Sounds any good. Anything Yet it's else? fine if people use them. It's just best if we don't put non vital stuff in that we're expecting to patch. Just extra work for us to backtrack. Oh, I'm including the, the quality costs for it. Yeah, they spent a fuck ton on it. Or they made it, like, excellent quality, so. Expensive. Okay, last call. Anyone else got stuff? Yeah. You tippy tappy. All right, that nope, sounds good. I appreciate everyone showing up, helping out, all that good stuff. I'm going to drop the recording here and see you guys next week. Uh, actually, quick thing. Um, was there an alternative time for the meetings, Legacy, from our last post, by the way? I, 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 know, I don't remember if this was ever officially like listed. I know Sundays are really good for people, but... It's going to keep being a bad day for me in the foreseeable future, so just want to make sure if there is an alternative day that would work. Since this was still around Saturday or Sunday, we did do a brief post, but yet it looks like a bad day for you. Yeah. You preferred Wednesday, right? Wednesdays are much better for me, yeah. So I think for the most part, we'll, we'll keep with Sunday uh, officially. But do expect my Sundays to be tentative. 
Um, if it does happen to not have a meeting on Sunday, we can have a makeup meeting on Wednesdays. Uh, if this is the case, I'll probably let people know uh, as soon as I can, first off. Um, but do like post and stuff for Sunday meetings. So if you have things you want to bring up, we are able to address it on the makeup Wednesday meeting. I'll follow up on this again and try to space stuff out more or maybe do a more asynchronous setup where stuff that explicitly needs you can be funneled there but otherwise just have things gone to other heads and have everything documented down for you to quickly review. Yeah. Cue, cue, kachoo. But uh, with that noted, um, I'll drop the recording here. Once more, appreciate everyone's faces, all the help you've been providing, all that good stuff. Blah, blah, blah.